basically we'll go over how to manually create territories in map business online and so we can do it by any geographic layer like states counties zips we have a map layers button if you wanted to you can add additional data layers so if i wanted to create it by a three digit zip code i could add that layer to the map and create uh, my territories with that layer if i choose to the first thing i'm going to do is look at my map and data box and i'm going to click on my map options button just so i can open it manage map and data and quickly look at my territory options at the top I do this just to make sure that my territories box is checked off to allow them to intersect. Um, sometimes when you're creating territories, you accidentally uh, reach into another territory and grab a zip from the, uh, the existing territory and thus make an overlapping territory. Sometimes you want that to happen, sometimes you don't. We have safeguards in place if you ever don't want them to overlap uh, so they can double check your work and I'll go over that in a little bit. So now that that's, uh, I double check that, I'm gonna close out of it and we can start creating our territories. I'm going to create them by zip code, so I'm going to enable that layer in my map and data box, and I'm going to turn on my states layer as well. I'm going to change those state borders just so they stand out a little bit more by clicking on the little settings gear next to states to open up manage map and data. I'm going to just change those from the tan to the, to the black. I'm going to change my labels as well. I'm going to make those a little smaller, and I'll make those black as well. In my zip five codes, if I click on this little tab on the left, I can click on my general tab and you'll find a transparency bar here. And I can swing that over to the right-hand side so that they're almost completely transparent so that when I'm zoomed in to street level detail, I can see that, uh, see through those zips. Now that I have managed map and data all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and use my zoom tools, which I've explained in another video, but I'm gonna click on this little magnifying glass to enable it. You can see it's enabled by that red circle with a white X, and I'm gonna just kinda zoom in on Oregon a little bit. Let's go right up to Portland. So now when we want to create a territory by zip code, I can just click on a zip code. When we do that, there's this little box that pops up and I have a new territory button. If I click that, then I can give it a name and I'll just call it Portland one. Anytime you create a territory, the data window will pop up and you have the option of changing the color here, anything you like. And you could also export the zips that are within that territory. I'm not gonna export yet because our territory is pretty small. So now uh, let's start expanding this territory and I'm gonna hold down the shift button on my keyboard and I'm gonna just start clicking away, start clicking all the zips that I think I want. Doesn't have to be perfect, we can always fix it later. And then once I'm done, rather than new territory, I'm gonna click edit territory and I'm gonna choose this option to add to Portland one and click edit. If you see you missed any, then you can just click on it Hold the shift button on your keyboard, click the next one, and any others that you want. Territory, add to, and edit. We're created. If I want to be able to see through this, uh, like I did with the zip codes, I now have a territories line in my map and data box. And if I click on the settings gear to open up uh, manage map and data, and you'll see I have a transparency bar here. This is a little bit different in that I'm going to swing it over to 50% just so I can see through it, but I still have those colors. If I go all the way to 90 like I did on zip codes, it makes it a little hard to see, so I'm going to just bring it to 50%. So that's how you can create uh, territory by clicking on them uh, one at a time. If you want to go much faster than that, we have search tools at the top, and there's a little pull-down list here when you're looking at the search tools. And our search tools are shapes with binoculars, and the different options I have are circle, I could create a polygon, a freeform area, which is just draw your own shape, and then a drive time area. I'm going to click on this freeform tool, and I'll just draw whatever I want. And then once I'm back, complete the shape. It'll ask me what I'm looking to find within that. I'm going to choose zip five codes, click next, and I'm going to create a new territory. So again, the data window pops up, fills in with the color, and I can change the color if I choose to. If I want to get rid of this uh, drawing that I used, I can click this delete button here and make that go away. So now I have a couple territories. And I'm going to make them overlap, um, some territories overlap in just a moment. But before I do, I'm going to go into manage map and data at the territory level. And I'll see that I have intersections now. And not only do we allow them to intersect, but if they do intersect, we can make them stand out with another color. So if I check this box, it defaults to red, but I like to use a pink or a white or a black just so it's really easy to see, especially when you're looking at a national map. 
So now that I have that enabled, anytime I create a territory and they overlap, we'll see uh, which ones do. So I'm gonna click on my free form again. And let's draw another territory. And I'm gonna intentionally grab some of the ones that I didn't mean to. Now I can see my green territory and I can also see some of those overlapping areas and I made those pink. You can tell if it's overlapping just because of that color. And also when you click on a zip, you get the select geography box pops up and it'll let you know that you clicked on a zip code and it lets you know here that you're part of two territories. So if you didn't mean for this to happen, what I can do is click on the individual zip, click continue, hold down the shift button on my keyboard if I have more than one and click those additional zips and then I can choose edit territory. We have different options here. We could choose to remove it from a territory and then later add it to the one that it's meant to be in. But we've recently added this button that says move to territory. So it kind of cuts out a few steps. And so let's say I really want them to just be part of Portland 2. So I'm going to move them to Portland 2. Click edit. Just like that, they're automatically part of that territory. Any geographic layer, whether it's Zips, County, States, or territories, we have these territory labels that pop up, and you can tie in some information to those territory labels by clicking on the little settings gear next to territories, and we can click on labels. Not only can you change the color of those labels, but we can click on format labels, and we can tie in five pieces of information to those labels. If I imported data, like if I imported customer data with sales or something like that, um, then I can tie that sales information from that spreadsheet uh, to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the first box for the first piece of information, and then I tell it where I want to pull that information from. If you've pulled in a spreadsheet or two, then you just tell it which spreadsheet you'd like to pull data from. And then the next column down, you'd be telling it which column of your spreadsheet you'd like to pull from. So in this case, I'm going to choose demographic data, and we have demographic data embedded in the program many years worth of data. Uh, we have information like population, median household income, ethnicity, all sorts of good stuff, and many years worth of that data. I'll just make it easy and just leave it on population. Click change labels. And now I can see the estimated population for those individual territories. So that's a neat little way uh, to show you how big your territories are by population. So the next way I'm going to show you how to create a territory is through the data window. And let's, for this, uh, let's create some territories in Florida. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the global boundary layer of zip five codes. So these are going to be all the zip codes in the United States. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some information. Let's say that I wanted to grab all the ones in Florida that meet a specific median household income level. I'm going to take this global list and I'm going to click this choose columns button. And from the pull down list, I'm going to choose demographic data. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down until I get to median household income. And when I have the field I want, I'm going to click this right arrow, make it hop over. Click on this blue arrow to make it uh, right next to my zip code. And then I'm going to start to remove some of the extra information that I don't want. So I don't really care about counties or states. I will leave primary state. Uh, and actually, I'll leave place name. Place name is just uh, basically what city, what major city it's part of. And then I'm going to click this blue arrow to make them go away. And then click set data column. So now my data set is a little neater. So now I've added median household income to all the zip codes in the nation. I'm going to then use my filter button and from the pull down list, I'm going to choose general and I'm going to tell it that I want to find a primary state and I'm going to choose this pull down list and make it equal to Florida. You can also use these if you were uh, going by a numeric value like uh, greater than or equal to and I'll show that off in a moment. So I'm making my primary state equal to Florida and I'm going to click filter. So now I have all of the primary state of Florida, all the zip codes within Florida, and I have a column for median household income. So that's step one. Step two, I'm going to go into my filter and I'm going to add a second filter. And this time I'm going to choose median household income. 
scroll down this list a little ways and get to median household income. And rather than equal to, I'm gonna do greater than or equal to, and let's choose a value of 55,000. So we wanna create a territory in Florida based on zip codes that are higher than 55,000 or equal to. Click filter. And now we can see we have 285 out of a possible 33,000 boundary zip codes in the US. So then I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna do all the geographies in the data view, click next, and I'll just give it a new territory name. Just so something makes sense to me, I'm gonna click create. And now I have a territory. Can't see it yet because I'm not looking at Florida. So let's zoom out. And so now I have a territory consisting of all of the zip codes above 55K. Um, if I wanted to tighten it up or neaten it up, I could use my freeform tools and draw around the shapes. Maybe I don't want the panhandle in Jacksonville. I could draw a shape around those and then remove them if I wanted to just to tighten up this territory. So just basically wanted to let you know how to do this. Move it from Florida above 55K. And so now we just have a more refined list based on demographic information. Now that we have this, we can click this export button. And one thing I wanna mention about the export button is we have this box that says add point only no boundary zip codes. So when you create a territory, it's a boundary zip code that's filled up with a color. There are two types of zip codes. There's boundaries, which you can use for territories, and then there's point zip codes. Point zip codes are essentially post offices or other large buildings that receive a ton of mail. They have their own zip code, but they're not really defined by a boundary just because they're a building. So if you want to be sure that you have a list of all the zip codes, point and boundary, the, the shapes and the buildings, then you can click this box to add point only zip codes to this list when you export and it'll export it back out to a CSV. If you have any questions, please let us know. We're available through chat, phone and email and otherwise have a great day.